And what do we have here? Religious Harmony Bill. Okay, first we're gonna do United Contana offers aid. The Foreign Minister of United Contana has offered a substantial amount of financial, logistical, and equip equipmental support to help our country. In return, United Contana requests uh, refuel and repair access to the Conriad naval base whenever they require. Chairman Leon Malenyev has sent personal assurances that this agreement is for peaceful purposes only. Hmm. Do we have any? Uh, do we have any? Um, any way to not accepting this offer? Can we not accept this offer? I mean, you could just be neutral and give everyone military access. Exactly. So they can fight the war yeah. on our land. We are we are just Poland. Now I'm sure. Exactly. I will accept. Yay! From minus four to minus three. Need to get repaired. What a big increase. It's crazy. Okay, what do we have left? It's the uh, the report. Condemnation from Arcasia. <laughs> the Arcasian ambassador in Holsort condemned the financial deal between Sorta and United Contana. The deciding president reigned for inviting United Contana to meddle in Eastern Macopian affairs. He announced that President Walker will do whatever it takes to defend its sphere from the enroaching threat of millennialism. Oh, but we'll this just... is perfect. Yeah, send him a letter and say, if you send me money, I'll give you access to you. If you send me two, then I will give the one back to the Soviets. <laughs> we are just trading the, me... the both superpowers. Who wants to help me? Do you want to help me? Hey, you get your money. Oh, but you want to give me more? Oh, I'm going to go to you. That's what we are doing. But first we have a bill. The Harmony Bill. The Religious Harmony Bill. For the purpose of increasing religious harmony and unity, the following laws are established in religious affairs. Section 1 of the RHB will ensure that the Day of Dissension ceremony in the Ark Sanctuary of Deir shall from now on hold only hold sermons in the Swordish language. So no more Bluedish language. Section 2 will forbid sanctuaries from holding sermons in Bluedish unless they receive approval from the Archpriest of Swordland. Section 3 will enforce that all priests implying to be state sanctions have sought his descendants to be able to receive their salaries and pensions. No. We are not going to use our veto. We cannot use our veto. That will only stir up even more. This was, this was decided by the assembly. That's true. But the, also the, the assembly majority is not have of a our assembly approved for this bill so who am i to veto this that's true i told everyone that i would not use my veto all right all right i'm gonna sign it <laughs> if this is what the grand, <laughs> grand assembly wants we are gonna go with it we are gonna get a rebellion uh-huh oh yeah they're gonna blow sign. up their cars like the irish did Oh, are, are there already troops? No, I don't see troops on the map. Oh. No, I don't see any armies. Nowhere. <laughs> Not at Rumburg or here or... No, I, I, I don't see any armies yet, so we are still safe. The Good. News. Yeah, the religious bill was signed. Uh, la, 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 la. Monsoon League, yeah, that's the, that's the British politician, and Franz Richter, that is the one from um, the uh, the good party. He's the guy who the reform went party. Like on vacation. Or, yeah. And radical. Rain attacks the holy day of dissension. The outrageous religious harmony bill, limiting freedoms of British people in Scotland. Out of all the points in the bill, one stands out the most. Yeah, with the Day of Dissension. But my my argumentation is that the Grand Assembly voted for it, and I cannot stop him. 
they're not gonna I care. signed a religious harmony bill into law. This is going splendid. Uh, how are my stocks doing? Oh, what a question. You said Black, Black <laughs> Tuesday. A call from Gus Menger. Office of the President of Swordland. I was sipping my first cup of coffee for the day when the phone lit and rang. Right under my breath. I thought my schedule was clear for at least half an hour. I picked up the phone. Mr. President, how are you? Not so great. You must have seen what's going on. Eh, uh, you? <laughs> Sorry to hear that, sir. It's not great to... It's not great on our end to some of our investments in Swordland are suffering due to Black Tuesday. I'm calling you because I received a call from the CEO of Arm Armadin Armadine Industries, Aaron Bridges, about the recent initial public offering on the uh, Ventry City Stock Exchange. As you might as you might have guessed, it's about our little venture investment of 1,000 shares worth nearly a million ren. Instead of suffering losses due to market volatility, the most public firms in Maricopia, we actually came out unscathed. Arcasia wasn't influenced by the Black Tuesday crash. Oh. Good. Good for them. The shares have doubled in price at the IPO and the and in the VCSE, and we will soon receive the profits made from the investments. It could have been much worse, but we got out of it with the best outcome. Isn't that great? Unbelievable. How can you say that we... How can you say that when the Swedish economy is crippled? Two. Great news! So how much did we gain? A three. I knew it was the right call to trust you on this. It's two, three. Appreciate it. In total, we have made nearly 2 million Swordish Ren. I bet that right now you're wishing you had bought more stocks earlier, right? It was good for a start, for sure. Darn it, yes I do! Three, I'm not much of a risk taker. Three. Oh, come on, you were the president. Nobody got to that seat without taking massive risks. I don't like him. <laughs> I assure you, this will pale in comparison to what we will do together in the future. The, the money will be transferred to your personal bank account shortly. Very well, I'll talk to you later then. Keep me up to update on other opportunities. This is the beginning of a good partnership, keep it up. Now we'll just the two, let's just keep him in line. We'll let you know immediately when new opportunities arise. Goodbye for now. The line dropped. Look at our wealth. <laughs> wow. Our stocks doubled. And if people are gonna know this, they are gonna they want my head. I made money and the rest of Swordland is in despair. What a beautiful situation. Oh, That's what a beautiful situation. Black Tuesday crash. Yeah. News. Is it already in the news? Arbitrary stocks jumped to nearly double. Yes, that's what, uh, what we got. Our stocks are... So we have some personal wealth. What can we actually do with it? No idea. Could build a new house. <laughs> yeah, with a swimming pool. <laughs> the private party of the gentlemen's club. What do we have here? We're even on the state of immigration regulation. Now let's go. With, let, let's let's have some fun first. Hopefully. Far from becoming accustomed to my workload as president, I only felt more and more snowed under as the weeks passed. It had been ages since I had any time to myself. Starting to lose my focus. My temper was growing increasingly thin. Peter was the first to realize I needed a break. The much cajoling finally persuaded me to come to a meeting of his new venture, Gentleman's Club. For the past few months I had been hosting a, so 
a salon of sorts, not just for politicians and businessmen, but also for artists, entertainers, people of taste. He told me with a smile on his face. This is where we all speak French and they do like seances. There was only one rule. No wives or girlfriends allowed, hence the name. And so I found myself in front of this new luxury villa in Elderly. Very loud jazz music uh, emanated from inside. I waited and waited, finally Peter opened the door. I could smell the whiskey on his breath. Anton, finally another real party can start. Come on in. As soon as I entered, Peter closed the door and turned to the small crowd. Gentlemen, a minute of your time, please. I'd known him for long enough to understand that he was more than a little drunk. He made an elaborate mock curtsy. What the hell? As I passed him and walked into the room, the music stopped and felt everyone's eyes on me. Thank you, Peter. What's next? A, a choir? A marching band? You. And I present to you Peter Vector, the first alcoholic vice president of Sartland. <laughs> One. What's next? A choir? A marching band? No, I'm oh. saving those for your funeral. <laughs> Peter laughs very hard at his own grim joke before continuing. Dear members, please give a warm welcome to our very special guest, if I may, Anton. Here, take this. He handed me a glass of whiskey and put his hand on my shoulder. We all know why we're gathered here tonight to celebrate life, to have a brief, brief escape from our tumultuous professions. I personally don't know any better cure for stress than a little drink. Only a little one? Ooh, I'll drink to that. Or three, raise your glass. I'll just raise my glass. Now, the tradition dictates that as the club president, I have to remind you of our house rules. There are three. No politics, no wives, no one sober. Cheers! We got drank the whiskey in this glass in one go. Wow. I'm gonna sip it. Anton Rain might have the power to make presidential decrees, but I, Peter Vector, and the president of this club, now declare this party started. Music, go! The band started up again. After greeting the ground around me, I felt a hand on my shoulder. Let me show you around. We walked through the corridors of his mansion. Statues and paintings lined the stark white walls. Arched, an arched window provided a view of the neatly manicured grounds, complete with a swimming pool. A grand lesbian marble staircase led up to the second story. Peter gestured at the massive crystal chandelier hanging overhead. That chandelier was made in the 18th century. Can you believe it? There's even a hedge maze in the garden. What's the story behind the chandelier? Two, how are you paying for all of this? Three, an 18th century chandelier and, and hedge maze? A little much, isn't it? Let's do three. Ah, come on, Anton. No. You only live once. No, no, <laughs> no. I'll let you in on a secret. Gus Ma Man Manger has a lot of contacts in real estate. He brokered a good deal for me. He'll also be here tonight. I can introduce you if you like. Do you think he could arrange a deal for me as well? Oh, God. So, what did you promise him in return? 3. Living in a lavish mansion while my country suffers is not for me. Let's do 3. I understand completely. That's why I've donated 30% of my vice presidential salaries to charity. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just don't believe Should you. we do too? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do you want to be mean to him? I don't know if he'd lie to you about that. I mean, maybe. Yeah, but he but... is going to say my charities and then this and that and that. Nothing serious. That's true. That's what he's going to do. I already know it. <laughs> really? Really? That's what it says on my tax forms, at least. Oh. 
<laughs> ah. We continued walking until we circled back to where we had started. So what do you think of my little hideaway? Not bad. It's amazing, but I'd hardly call it a hideaway. More like a palace. Frankly, I find it disgusting. It's more pal more like a palace. It definitely doesn't rival yours. Anyways, let's get back to the party. I've arranged for some caviar to be brought from Lesbia. You're going to love it. Opened the door to the main hall. and really joined the other guests. Music was louder now, and the mood decidedly more inebriated. Cocktail waitresses were carrying around plates of canapes. No idea what that is. Wearing dresses that left little to the imagination. One, I thought this was a gentleman's club. Two, gesture at one of the waitresses to come over. Three, so this is what you've been hiding from Evelyn? That's his, that's his wife. Yes. Then, I think we are going to get a fight today. But how long <laughs> is it going to take? I don't know. If I do three, we start it now. Let's stay a bit neutral. I thought it was a gentleman's club. Would you rather get stirred by wrinkly, by wrinkly old men, sweet over the... <laughs> He waved over at here. one of the waitresses, and she came over to us. She was in her mid-twenties, wearing red lipstick, her blonde hair neatly tied into a ponytail. On her plate were toast points, slathered than the lesbian caviar Peter had mentioned. He took a bite. It was rich, salty, tasting of pure seaside. You could almost hear the sound of waves and seagulls. Oh, please, keep your poets for yourself. Hmm. <laughs> Lesbian caviar, best in the world. I'm telling you, Anton, there are few pleasures in life that are this. As the waitress left us to serve another attendee, she flashes a quick smile at Peter over her shoulder. He smiled back a little too broadly. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Sensual. His eyes were still fixed on her with an expression I remembered from our many nights out together as students. Oh, look, there's Gus. Why don't you talk to him? I'll be back shortly. Oh, where is he gonna go? Peter, I'm <laughs> warning you. Don't make a mistake. Or two, where are you going? As if he don't know. So we are gonna do one. Mistake? What are you talking about? I'm just going to the washroom. I'll be yeah. back before you know it. Is he Canadian? <laughs> yeah, well, I, washroom? I can... <laughs> I I actually get it that he will be back before we know it, but he is going to go there. Mm -hmm. He left the room and I headed over to Gus. Gus Manger was standing next to a couple of men that I recognized as banking industry magnates. As I approached, all of them turned to me and bowed their heads. Mr. President, a toast to our new member, everyone. He glassed, and people are just raised theirs. They don't seem all surprised to see me here. How long have you been a member? Three. I heard this mention is a result of your connections. Hello, Dragnet. I'm gonna do three, see if Peter Hello. lies. He is not here at this moment. That's true. That's right, I do have a wide network in real estate. Peter told me a couple weeks ago that you might be interested in potential opportunities such as, well, this. He opened his arms, gesturing at our opulent surroundings. Let's take a walk. The balcony has the balcony has an amazing view. Of we left the room and made our way to the balcony. On the way, he took out two cigars and held one out for me. Refuse. Put the cigar down. Cut it up his own and started smoking. Went out to the balcony. All of Erlory was at our feet. From this vantage point, I was able to see how expensive the building plot was. The swimming pool and the hatch made maze were visible from here. Leaning over the railing, I admired the view for a moment before Gus spoke up. I know you're wondering about the deal Peter made. In a nutshell, thanks to my network, he was able to procure this house for half the asking price, which would have been impossible under any other circumstances. I would be delighted to discuss a similar arrangement with you. 
In fact, I prepared a document with my own personal favorite opportunities. This is the least I can do since you have, since you have been generous to many business people in this country. One, I am not looking to make any investments at the moment. Two, what's in it for you? Three, I'm glad my investment decisions are paying off. Four, thank you. Should we do the investment stuff when our country is in, in rubble? I mean... People are going to scratch their heads when they find out. <laughs> well, when they find out about this party, they're really going to get mad. I am not looking to make any investments at the moment. Real estate is the best investment anyone can make. With the current economic situation, it only makes sense to put your money in such a tangible asset. But I also have a few other opportunities for you to make a side profit if real estate doesn't interest you. Is there any chance I can convince you? No. Well, we can also see what he has available. Let's see what he has then. I knew you'd come around. Just opened his briefcase and pulled out a thin dossier. He showed it to me. My first offer is, of course, real estate. There is a vineyard close to Ellery, Air Air Lorry, about a one-hour drive from here. That also includes a very large villa, a beautiful plot, but rather neglected, so there would be a fair amount of renovation costs. On the bright side, you'd be able to produce your own wine. The previous owner was Gilrit Gil Gil Gilart of Ribery, <laughs> a world-renowned inventor. There's also the option of a football partnership. I already own a large person of Enrica FC, and I'm doing my best to make them champions. Buying buying in would be more expensive than the vineyard, but this season will bring a lot of returns. I'm quite positive. Hmm. My biggest opportunity, though, is the possibility to buy shares at Underhall Constructions. My connections ensured me that this would not be open to pu to the public and would benefit you greatly. As you know, they are the biggest construction company in Swordland. Yes, and, them, they yes. and they bribed me. For the railroad. For the highway. And I still picked them, but I did not, I did not take the bribe. Give me the word, and I will start the procurement process, but we must act quickly, as these options might soon disappear off the market. A vineyard in El Rory. I always wanted to have my own wine, and it sounds peaceful and quiet. I think when we do this winery, that we are not getting involved with politics. Do I invest in the underworld destruction? No. Three, football sounds exciting, N maybe. You know what, let's get the winery. It's a small investment. The vineyard, the vineyard in El Erlori. Wow, that's so hard to pronounce, Erlori. I always wanted to have my own wine and it sounds peaceful and quiet. Excellent, I will start the process right away. Now if you excuse me, Mr. President. She left her the party alone on the balcony. Looked out over Erlori. Suddenly I heard a rustling from the hedge maze below. I looked down and saw a silhouette. Two silhouettes, actually. So close together they seemed to be entangled. Oh no, there he is. Oh. I squinted and tried to get a better look. There was definitely two people kissing, but I couldn't see their, either of their faces. I returned to the party and spent some time mingling with the other guests, engaging them in small talk about their businesses, their children, their relationship. Around an hour later, Peter showed up next to me. See, I told you it'd be back before you knew it. Uh... It's been an hour. Where were you? Was that you in the hatch maze? Was that you in the hatch maze? What are you talking about? I told you I went to the washroom. Around the same time you were gone, I saw two kissing in the hatch maze. I will be direct. Were you kissing the waitress? No, we don't have proof, so we are saying nothing, just curious. All right, want a drink? Because I do. Oh no. He poured us two large glasses of whiskey and we drank them in one go. Throughout the party we drank and drank just like old times. I woke up the next day with a pounding headache and more than a few regrets. My memories of the evening were hazy. 
there was one important detail that kept coming back to me. The, the red lipstick on Peter's collar. There it is. But maybe my memory was playing tricks on me. No, no, they are not. Okay, we are spending some wealth in some more investments. And let's use again. It's going to take so long. It's going to take so long. Doesn't rain the Great Divider. Yeah, we had this one already. About the religion in their own language. Not going to read everything again. Uh, Peter throws a Levis party. Oh. And we have this one. We'll accept financial aid from... Yeah, we accept. His intention is to take a side in the international air arena and align Sortland with a major superpower will certainly have lasting effects in the region. Although on the surface this may appear simply a boost to Sortland's crypto economy, the remote motive is still unclear. President Ray move move might be signaling a potential alliance between Sortland and other countries in SP. The Contenant Security Pact makes an alliance with Foxland a probable outcome. Yeah, I think we have to align with one of them. It's going to come down to making a choice, I think. Briefing on the status of immigration regulation. Oh, there is Mr. Yosef again. We're in the middle of a oh, meeting at the palace is. about our plan for the immigration policy. And soon discussion quickly became heated. I don't think so, Mr. Whiskey. Mr. Whiskey? It just doesn't make any sense to me that a foreign citizen should come before a Swordish citizen in Sorlin. Well said. My analysis, my analysis is also in line with this, especially during the economic recession. We are giving Swordish jobs to immigrants from other countries. What about our own people? Immigrants are the reason our economy is not in a state that is unsalvageable. Look at Agnolian immigrants in Ag Aglan. They have revitalized the whole region. Not just that, they have been boosting the economy of the entire country. Simon can attest to that. So statistically speaking, allowing the immigrants to become part of the workforce it contributes to our economy, but I agree that the current situation is very nuanced. We can't just tighten our immigration policy and expect the economy to stay the same. We need to put economy and the recession at the forefront especially after the stock market crashed <laughs> god damn it contrary to his usual calm demeanor simon's force gradually increased as he clenched his fists everyone in the room turned to him in surprise i'm sorry for losing my cool mr president i've been working day and night i'm currently looking into ways to find out how we can recuperate as quickly as we can one, be careful, don't burn yourself out. Two, I'm expecting good results, Simon, do not fail me. Three, how's it looking? Is there a way out? Let's just go with that one. I do not want to say anything early, Mr. President. Thankfully, we've just started receiving the financial aid from United Cantana. <laughs> I can't believe that we've accepted financial aid from communists. I thought I would never live to see the day. Kantana worships in Conerat. My father would be roll. It will be rolling. <laughs> well, I will not. I will not let you question my decisions, Joseph. Don't be dramatic. We need to be friendly with our potential allies. Three. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Four. I've done this with sort of citizens in mind. Nothing else. Yes. That's how we take over countries, you know. That's how they take over countries. We have seen it happen many times. Gentlemen, 
Can we please get back on topic? Right, sorry, Mr. Whiskey. As I was saying just before I was interrupted, look at the superpowers. Do you see them closing off their borders? Why do you think they have such a large economy? They are in their current state because they welcome immigration used to their advantage. One, we need to modernize and reach the level of superpowers. Two, we need to consider the impact on the economy. Three, all the citizens must come first. Impact on the economy. Our money flow should be our utmost concern if we want to have the capability to do actual change. We need a decision, but before we move on... Mr. President, do you have any questions about the current state of immigration? Uh, what is the current legal status of immigrants? Currently, all accepted immigrants are given a work permit on an arrival so that they can work and contribute to the economy of Sortland. There's currently no limit on the number of immigrants accepted. However, we are able to sustain with the current. However, we are able to sustain with the current numbers. Despite the laws, the fact is many immigrants illegally work for corporations. This is the main issue with immigration right now, not the immigration itself. Nonsense. If not for the un the unlimited amount of immigration, we wouldn't be in this state. How many immigrants live in Sortland? Official numbers show that we have anywhere between 2 to 3 million immigrants residing in that is a very substantial amount. The primary issue is the strife they cause between less fortunate Sorbish citizens and themselves. Including them in the workforce would benefit everybody, including the unemployed citizen. More taxes means more services. And how do they arrive here? There are three major paths they choose. First one is the Agnlan, the Agnolia border. The second is the Ber Bergia to Wayland border. And the third is the Loren coast. What is there? Agnolians are the largest group flowing past our light border, although recently political fugitives from Vagsland has, has also escaped via boats through the Grey Sea to land on our coast. The Waziks, who are facing political persecutions, tend to use the dangerous mountain passes on our border to Wayland. Many of them also have bluish blood. Let's move on to see what can be done about the immigration status. Very well. David Whiskey opened his dossier stamped with the seal of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Before we make any decisions, I have to remind you. During the elections, we promised to tighten immigration laws, of course. As you know, I was and I still am against it. I agree with David. We can turn immigration to our advantage from a financial Advantage? You should go over the amount of issues caused by immigrants. I can provide you with a report later. It would surprise you. We need to keep our promises and focus on our own citizens. That is what I think. Let out a long sigh. This is going nowhere. If we decide to tighten the immigration, what does that entail? 2. What are the consequences of keeping the immigration relaxed? 3. I am ready to make a decision. Okay, let's, let's go over them. What does tightening the immigration entail? We would have to impose quotas and connect and connect it to that stricter border control. On top of allowing our economy to get a hit. Which economy? Mr. Hall, there are more important things like the well-being of our citizens internal security. Agreed. Sortish citizens should take priority. What are the consequences if I keep it relaxed? They are not... I don't know what to do. Besides, besides from the continued prosperity of Sortland following along our path to become a more modern better country not much our current system is good for our era we also have the capacity this allows us to continue protecting the investments from foreign countries which in turn will keep our trade steady we will be more trustable partners stability draws money stability what stability there are already issues in between our 
immigrants popping up all over because of this. In contrary, the only way we can ability is through tightening the immigration. <laughs> Swordland first. Oh no. Yes. What are we gonna do? <laughs> what are we gonna do? Which yet speak? speak? One or two? Do we keep the immigration which laws relaxed? Everything. Which would be better for the economy. And I think that's maybe the best thing to do at this point. But we break our promise. Or two, we'll tighten the immigration laws. And keep our promise. But maybe that's not good for our economy because we don't we have less workers. Let's go saying one. Yeah. I think I will go with one. I'm gonna break my promise. I think we have to do anything we can right at this point to keep our economy working. Let's hope the uh Sort of the yeah, the sort of citizen, citizens don't get mad. But they are already mad, so <laughs> that does it. Matter. That's true. Uh, that I'm true. gonna keep them relaxed. We're gonna break our promise. I am glad you have made the right choice. We will be forced to handle new waves of immigrants. Border posts aren't ready. Well then, how would you be able to... Okay, not only that, but we just abandoned the swords who really need it, our support the most. Also, this will bring a new ton of refugees from Wayland. Bergia is already a difficult region to manage. This is shameful. We are not leaving Sordid unprotected. It is a logical decision. Dude, my decision is final and irreversible. Time to move on. Wait, the Sitters Sordid aren't forgotten. Our work for them continues. And now they will compete to bring food on the table with foreign immigrants. I am disappointed. Anything else, Mr. President? Thank you for your contributions. Let's wrap this up, too. Let's end the discussion and get to work. There are changes to be made. Three. I want everybody here to get used to the new changes. It is our new direction. Let's just do one. Ministers gathered their documents and stood up from their chairs, some with frowns on their faces. <laughs> I am looking forward to the upcoming trade talks. Peter and I have been actively visiting Stellaport and I'm not even going to try to pronounce that <laughs> to repair it all. Or definitely in Poland with names like that. I'll be coming along to talk with the economy minister look at potential partnership. If we are finished, I need to head off and get the ministry to work on the new policy. Same here. Our border units need to be informed and prepared. Keep up the good work. The ministers dispersed. Oh well. Oh well. I've not even something on my journal, this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna take a long time, isn't it? Most likely. Oh. Oh, we sell Sordlet ah, for we money. They uh, they heard about you the support of United Contana. Okay, I think we're going to take a small break. Yep. Uh, I will read the report. Protest for Buddhist rights. Yeah, there they go. The Buddhist people are rising up. And then over here we have the, the Benfi Festival. We're going to open. But we will do it after the break.